Hey, how y'all doing out there today? Uh, please excuse me right now. <laughs> I got the worst head cold in the world, and um, I just walked to the store and took me a break. Yeah, me and Bo, we don't walk since old Irvin. He, he don't like to walk too much anymore. And uh, but um, it's a good little walk to the store, so it gives me some time to think. And uh, man, <laughs> I got a me personally. I have a whirlwind of things to be thinking about right now. So many different uh, fronts, so many things to pay attention to. So many things I'm having to deal with right now, but that's cool because uh, through all that, I can still be me. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. Uh, when, I was, when I was walking to the store, uh, I was talking to my Karen Sue on the phone, and uh, as she was talking, and she, she just sparked things in my thought process. And when I got off the phone with her and started walking back, uh, I really got to wondering, like, not, not in the poor, poor me sense of things, but in the, the why do so many people, when they, they can't just hate me or not like me. It's that when they hate me, man, they just got to destroy me. I mean, they got to kill my name. They, they got to kill me. I mean, it's crazy. And, I, and uh, while I don't consider myself to be nobody, I, I do consider myself to be a very real uh, down-to-earth brother and a, and a loving earth brother. <laughs> I love my planet. And, uh, and I'm very strong on some things, but they're very real things. And also, I never try to push anybody to to see my views and my beliefs my way i ask you to think i ask you to look in the mirror i mean i can't put it no clearer than what than how i do it but seeing some of the things i talk about really get folks upset some of the lies that i bring out to show the lie inside of the lie sometimes uh it really really trips people out and, and they'll get the word they're hating on me and and next thing you know say if it's social media or something they they block you if it's in the workforce they shun you and but then they then they go to spending all their time researching trying to prove you wrong and like i was writing earlier in a statement uh the more they research to prove they're wrong the more they find out that they were wrong that they were living a lie and then they get to hating on everything and you might wind up losing a friend a, a, a a co-worker, somebody that you've known for a long time, all over one little subject matter, but that's just it. It's kind of, it's like there's no little subject matter anymore. I really noticed over the last month and a half being in jail, how, now, and, and, and because of the environment, but how selfish men can be. I never heard anyone come up and say, hey, what about your case, buddy? Is everything going all right? No, everybody walked around talking about him, and they should. They worry, they're in jail. Uh, you, you lose your sense of connection you lose uh everything you know you're just in a brick and steel building so you don't have any connection with anybody so yeah you're probably thinking about yourself but man this is what i've been talking about since i've been talking to y'all we, we are individuals we are the only one that's responsible for our safety we are responsible for our actions and who we are we're responsible for our next meal our next glass of water we're responsible for the lives we brought into this world but man it's gotten to where it's like poor, poor me. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's got too much on their plate. Uh, and some of these cases are, are like that. Some of us do get too much on our plate. Well, I got a dear sister right down the road here that had too much on her plate. People crash and burn. Uh, some of us just sleep for <laughs> 12 hours at a time. Or some of us go into depression. Some of us get angry. Some of us have different ways of dealing with it. But most of the time, it's really not about anything in our real life. It's either our people or my religion or my politics or you're attacking my beliefs. And But, man, uh, it's like I said, who, who helps you uh, in your real life? Who's right there beside you all the time? Um, so when I see all these people hating on me, what I see is not enemies so much as I see future allies. I see people that are, are going to hate what I said out loud. They're going to hate the fact that I ask them to look at their cells because a lot of us don't want to look at our cells, and we know that, and we know this. A lot of us don't want, don't care to even stop and think I'm living a lie because it's so comfortable. It makes you fat and lazy, and when I say fat and lazy, I don't mean fat and lazy so much in your body. I mean fat and lazy in your mind and in your spirit. You no longer care. You're just going to go punch that clock. You're going to make just enough money to pay the bills you're going to get by, and it's the system, and it's something keeping you down, and Wow, this is just it. Or some people actually in America, believe it or not, are very well to do. And they love the lie because it's, it's very comfortable. And they sit on plush furniture and they have three or four refrigerators and TVs in every room and more bathrooms than, than, <laughs> than anybody needs. And they idolize people like the Kardashians and the Hiltons and the Trumps that all have big money and billionaires and they'll never be there. But they love the little trickle down 
uh, money they get. They love the little trickle down, trickle down culture they get. They like to get uh, what my brother Gerald uh, Kenyatta Hay uh, calls uh, the chicken bones from the man. Y'all love some scraps. Slaves love some scraps, man. They just beating that shit up like Thanksgiving dinner. Like, mm -hmm, that's some scraps, man. There was some good scraps right there. But they scraps when the whole table was yours all along. When all of these things in the world were never even meant to be for us. They're toxic. They're, they're toxic to make. They're toxic to have in our lives. Most of, them, most of the gadgets and things that seem to make life easier actually kill you and make you lazier and make you fatter and make you sicker. Uh, especially sicker and uh, cancer and all is just from innovations from plastic and aluminum alone have killed us. So when I see these people hating on me, I think that's when I need to love them the most. That's when I need to look at them and say, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. I ain't liking what you're saying to me because you're being, being hard or being mean or whatever. You're being, you're being cruel because you're hating, but you're going to see. You're going to see because it was spoken. See, I'm telling every single one of y'all right now, all y'all seed planters and all y'all that are opening eyes, not only do I love you, but I'm going to give you the best, but the best hope in the world to keep on doing it. You can't unring a bell. You get that? You can't unring a bell. Once it's heard, it's been heard. Once you've said something, once you pointed out the lie, the darkness, the, the sickness of the lie to somebody, they're going to fight you hard to begin with. And that's when you just sit back and you hold your ground. And you give them time, because guess what? Like I just said, some people love the matrix. Some, some people love the system. Some people just are like fat hogs just laying in the pen. They, they're so conditioned that they just roll in the mud and wait on that next bucket of slop, just waiting to be eaten. Maybe even knowing you're going to be eaten. Don't even care. Don't even care, because everything fits you, and, and you're okay. And none of them things you see on the TV or here on the Internet or, or none of them things your friends are going through, they're not happening to you, so I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm not going to, I'm not going to call it any trouble. I'm just going to sit back and comply. Well, compliance is death. It's not a physical death. It's a, it's a, it's a death of freedom. It's a death of you making choices for your life. It's a, it's a death of you looking at your brother and saying, I'm your brother. We're united. We are the same. There's nothing different. I'll give y'all a little bit of history right here real quick. While all y'all are searching for who you are and, and who did what and what started this, it was in 1681, and the British are the ones that define color as race. There were free black men in America in 1681, and before that, everybody got along, and they got tired of seeing the white women going out and marrying the black man and the Indian, the, the, the Native American. So go look it up. That's when the laws were made that said a, a black man and a white man. That's where white people were actually created, the term white people. So the, uh, we've been being played for, for almost 400 years, and some people... Especially the, the black man, and sure, he caught the rough end of the stick because he became, see, all they did was with color, they made it where it was white slaves, brown slaves, and black slaves. And each of those slaves were called different things. One could be an indentured servant. One, one was a slave and a, a bought and sold slave, like, uh, like slavery days. So you see what I'm getting at? They made the difference. We didn't make the difference. And see, that's something none, uh, many people don't want to hear, that there is no difference, that the differences are made by paper law, by super rich people that maybe, yeah, they are the real haters. Maybe, yeah, they are the racist of the world. Maybe, yeah, they are oppressing a certain group of people. I believe that with all my heart. I know it's rich people, but they made it white people. And white people are still slaves. We're only, in America, we're only like just 5% of the population. And in the world, we're only 9% of the population. But almost all of that 9% are slaves. They're tax slaves. And some of them, some of them are very willing and knowing slaves. They know exactly what they're doing. And when you tell them that, they get mad. You just, you just pointed out their lie. They're comfortable in it. It's like somebody that gets in a room stinky with a cat box, and it smells like cat crap all over the place. But you get in there, and you stay in there for a little while, and then you don't notice the smell no more. Then you know, that's when you like saying stuff to people when they come over. Oh, I know it smells bad, but we don't smell it no more. Well, that, that's the way the lie is. You smell it, and you live it so long that you get used to it. You get so used to it that it becomes a part of your memory, a part of your, li of your life, like the truth to you. And then when somebody points it out, it's like, it's like ripping a scab off a, off, a, off a big giant wound and just burns and it, and it sucks. And then you want it to not be true. And that's another part. That's another problem with these people, y'all. Those that don't want to see the light or even, even, even say that, hey, I agree to disagree or uh, I understand you, but I don't have to accept you. Man, it's just sad. 
they that lie that they live for so long it's like they don't want to come out and even admit it so it's hard to admit like hey man uh, uh, yeah i'm the one that stole that five dollars off the table or hey man yeah i'm the one that bumped into your car or hey man i'm the one that took your last beer it ain't like saying that it's like hey man i was wrong about uh the way i believed uh, in god and, hey man i was wrong about the way i believed in energy sources hey man i was wrong about the way i believed in chemtrails the government all these other things vaccines gmo food poison water but the main thing like the base things like christianity and politics they don't want to step away from them because they just don't want to be wrong and that's on them y'all so that's where people like us in a tribe we don't, that's why I always say, man, I love you. That don't mean I got to like you. That don't mean I got to come to every barbecue. You know what I mean? But it does mean that we are intelligent enough and real enough to realize that without all of us, or at least the most of us, there ain't going to be no planet. There ain't going to be no society. There ain't going to be um, any kind of life that you would want to live or you think is life now. Uh, there's no choice in life, no choice in you getting to be who you are. Right now, you basically got to pick from being left or right in America. So that's two boxes with all kind of little boxes in it. When you're in the box, you're in jail. That's when you're in prison, in the prison right here. That's when you're a slave. When you're free is when you step out of the box and be you. And when you're really hated, and it won't be for long, but when you're really hated, it's because of your truth, not because of your lies. Nobody gets hated for telling their lies. Somebody could get out here and just say anything they want about God, Jesus, the world, anything, the government, as long as it's something that just resonates with MSN or, or don't hurt your feelings, you go along with it. But, but tell somebody to prove something one time. Tell somebody uh, you really want to base your eternal soul on what you just told me. Ask, ask them some serious questions and just live your life now. There's the key. You can't be bouncing around. You can't be wishy-washy. You got to live your life the way you, what comes out the mouth got to come off the feet. You understand what I'm saying? Got to come off the hands. So don't just speak it. Live it. Build it. Show them. Show them the life that you're talking about. Because we can have all different kind of ways of being. That's called culture. That's called, that's called individual. That's called personalities. But as a collective, we got these couple of major things in common. It's like air, food, and water. We got to have them. Well, children to carry on. We got to have them. We, and we can only have this through brotherhood, through realizing that we are all equal, that rich people around 1681 started this new wave of crap. I don't want to go way back in the back because they got other things out there to fool you. But, but at least since 1681, rich people made laws defining who we are and what we can be and who we can marry and blah, blah, blah. It's 2018. It's time to put the things that are past behind us and live our lives today. No matter how bad somebody hates it, no matter how bad they don't want to hear it, you tell them and you walk off. We don't need to be obnoxious and push things like some Jehovah Witness at the front door. You know what I mean? But come on. I even invite them in just to tell them about the 144,000 getting to heaven. Like, I think you missed the boat. But you know what I'm saying? This hatred and this, and this, this inability to talk to each other because we're so consumed with our own selfish needs. And then what gets me is somebody won't even admit that it's their selfish needs anymore. They're like, well, it's not just me. It's my party. Or, or I'm not the only one treated bad. It's my people. Or, hey, man, it's my church. No, it's you. It's you. And everything ain't everything. Everybody ain't everybody. There's little instances out there that pop up and people blow them out of proportion. And that's just the way it is everywhere. Well, that ain't the truth. That's more that hate. That's more that hate because they want to pump up the lie they want to distract you from the lie so you don't break their lie their lie has them very comfortable it's like that's like a baby eating candy you just can't let them do it all the time that's for sure you can't let them live the lie all the time i get that and i understand that with you brothers and sisters that's why i'm talking about it right now like this and trying to keep it as real as i can i'm sitting right here in mother earth how everything around me that i need to be calm when i say this is a truth and the truth is people hate us because they don't, it's not because of the truth, it's because of the lie. They hate us because of the lie that we are ruining for them, that we are ripping away their blinders. We're, we're, we're giving them a breath of cold air, a big wind of cold air to wake them up and say, hey, you know, you can live that way and that's fine. That's your choice. If you want to live a lie, you can live a lie. Live it until you die and they embalm you and put you in the earth where you don't do nothing for the earth. Or you can just listen to the truth. And re and reevaluate your life. 
they can just reevaluate their lives, reevaluate their thought process. And here's the other thing. And I think there's a lot of reason why people don't want to come out and admit that they was wrong. Because they think we'll just rub it in their face. Well, if anybody ever comes up to you and questions their beliefs or says they may have been wrong about something, you thank them for researching, number one. And then you thank them for being human enough to say I was wrong. They ain't nothing wrong with getting in trouble. They ain't nothing wrong with, with uh, uh, having to be, uh, you know, like I said, getting in trouble, having to be punished. As long as you learn something from it. And on you don't go back. We all make mistakes. That's an old cliche, but we all fuck up. How about that? And when we do and say, hey, man, that was something. I'm really sorry, man. Wow, that was on me. I watched me live the rest of my life and prove that I, I learned something from that. That's how we move on. That's how we become strong. That's how we get wisdom from our knowledge and experience in life. So think about that when you're judging somebody. And y'all out there hating so bad. Maybe take a little bit of what people are telling you. And look into it a little bit more or, or look at what's going on in your own personal life and see if that really applies to your religious life, your social life or your political life or even your financial life, your, your, what class you think you're in, anything. Any of the things designed to keep you hating and fighting truth uh, or a lie that you really know you're living and, and maybe got a little too comfortable with, uh, look at it. Look at it strong. I don't cuss somebody and say, hey, you're wrong. Screw you, man. Just say, wow, let me just check on this a minute. Uh, let me find an intelligent way of letting uh, Bill or, or this brother or this sister know that they're wrong. And then when you find out that you might be wrong, really dig into it. And when you find the truth, live it. Live that truth. Because if every one of us lived our truth, if every one of us talked to the man and, and woman next to us and, and, and said what we thought and it showed respect and tried to get respect in that manner, and sought for that type of coexistence in knowledge and wisdom. I think the world will be a better place. And I, and I think a lot of the things that we worry about or whine about or won't gone will be gone. Because unless you, unless you live the change, there ain't going to be no change. There ain't no change without being the change. You got to live it. And you live it, then you're the change. And there you go. You did it. And others are on this. Whereas I think there's far more of us that understand about brotherhood and unity to save the planet or, or to coexist with the planet at least until it's gone. Uh, I think our numbers are a lot bigger than y'all think. So quit thinking that we're small and small groups or whatnot. We're not. We're a large portion. Just a lot of us aren't outspoken. And that's cool. But think about it now. Think about when, uh, don't be worried about somebody hating you for what you're saying. Matter of fact, be worried if they don't hate you for what you say. That's today's day. That's, that's what's really going on. But when you do, it's going to make them research. And when they research, they're going to find out they're wrong. And that's on them to change them. But that's how you start. All right. I love y'all. I'm going to get out here and walk me on bow and uh, get on back down the road since my hips feel a little better. <laughs> I love y'all. I want you to be smart. I want you to have great knowledge. But most of all, I want you to get along the best you can without the extra stuff. And, and try to understand our brothers and sisters when they're really mad at, or, mad at us or hate us and, and all we did was tell the truth. Uh, that means you got somewhere. You, that's a start. That's the first step. I love y'all. Peace and sorry about my running nose. And uh, y'all don't live in fear. That fear is a bitch.